Rachel Parlett from the Classroom Nook. I'm going to show you how to set up a student blog using the blogger format, which is through Google. Um, so if your students already have a Gmail account, this will work seamlessly. If they don't, you'll need to get them one. It's a free um, email provider that they can get, and you can just sign up through it through mail.google.com. So once you are in their email account, so each student has their own email, if you go to this little nine square grid at the top, if you click on it, you'll notice one of the options is Blogger. So you can click on Blogger, and it's gonna bring up my blogs, but I'll show you how to create a new one. So um, yours won't have any blogs yet, but over here in the corner, you'll be able to create a new blog. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And then what you're gonna want is to have your students create a title for their blog. If you want it to be very simple, you can just do their first name and it'll automatically tag on .blogspot.com at the end. So you can have your students give their blog a specific name or just have it be their name. It's up to you. So I'm just going to do test blog and let's pretend that that's the kid's name. So it'll be test blog .blogspot.com and then if you click on that, It'll say, sorry, this address is not available. If that happens, you can play around with it. Sometimes if you just add a hyphen, it will work. So probably, obviously, a lot of people have done this before. So play around with um, with their names and see how what works. Okay, so I've got test-student-blog.blogspot.com. So that would be the my test blog URL. Yours is obviously gonna be a lot simpler. Sometimes you might need to shorten the student's name. Um, maybe just an initial for their last name, whatever works. Have them play around with it, and then once you've done that, you can create blog. You can also from here have them choose a theme, but I suggest going getting just their URL set first, and then you can go back in, and I'll show you in a second how the students can choose a theme to kind of customize the look of their blog. So I'm going to do test blog, and my address is test-student-blog dot blogspot.com so all students blogs will have this last tagline to their blogs and then you just press create blog all right next it's going to ask you if you want to create a, a special domain name for it and you're most likely not going to want to do that you'll have to pay for that and for your purposes you just need the blogspot.com is just totally fine so you're going to click no thanks to that so this is going to be the student's dashboard. It's pretty user friendly. You're going to want to go through with your students how to go about creating new posts and whatnot. Um, but this is what their post is going to, what their dashboard is going to look like. Over here on the side, you'll see a list of options that students can click through. The top one is going to be the post. That's where they can create a new post by clicking on this button. The next one is stats. You're not going to worry about that. That's just if you're tracking how many people are looking at your blog. That's not going to be important to you for this purpose. Um, the next one down is comments. So you can leave comments on your students' blogs just as you would if you were writing in their journal. And these next few, you're not going to worry about earnings, campaigns, pages. That would be only if you wanted to add um, extra things across the top. So let me show you an example from my blog, The Classroom Nook. I have all of these tabs at the top. Um, so if you go to just the home page, you can click on the welcome start here. You can go to the home contact and the classroom game nook. Um, you're probably not going to need those for your students' blocks. So you can ignore that. The layout don't need to worry about, and the theme and the settings. We'll look into these two because those both um, you may need to get into just to tweak a few things for your students' blocks. Let's take a look at theme. So here is where the students can customize what the background of their blog looks like. Um, if you just want them all to be the same, you might choose something like simple. Down here, simple blog, it's just gonna give them a very clean heading across the top, nothing fancy, um, but the students can play with it. So if you click on it, you can preview what the blog would look like, and this is the simple blog. So right here where it says test blog, that's where your student's name would be. There's no post at this time, but if there was, that they would show here. Um, you could search the blog. So it kind of go, goes ahead and gives a few things already in it, um, but you probably won't have to play with, around with it too much. That's what the simple blog looks like. Um, if you want them to be able to play around and choose a little more, here's one with a book. Um, that would be cute for your students. Let them play around with it, um, but the simple category is probably your best bet because you don't have to worry about adding photos anywhere. 
One of the first things that you're going to want to have your students do, or you can do this for them if you're the one setting up the blogs for each of the students, but if you go into settings, you want to make sure that this blog is only visible by you and possibly the other students in your classroom. We don't want this to be visible to the public. So if you go to settings and you scroll down to the bottom, you'll notice here where it says blog readers. Right now it's by default set to public. So if you click on edit, you can scroll a little bit further and there are your options here, public, private, only blog authors, and I'll show you what that means in a minute, or private, only these readers. So if you only want it visible by yourself and the other student, or the student that is writing the blog, you'll click on private, only blog authors. If you want it visible by yourself and other students in the class, you would click on private and only these readers, and what you would need to do is add in the email addresses where, where it says add readers here. You're going to type in the email addresses of all your students. Then what would happen is they would get an email, each of the students would get an email, and they would have to click on um, to accept the invitation to read this blog. If you just want it for you and your student to read, just the students who's writing the blog and yourself, then click on private here. And then up here where it says blog authors, you're going to add yourself add author and you're going to type in your email address you'll get an email you'll accept it and then the two of you you and your student will have will be the only ones who can access reading the their blog so you can decide for yourself if you want your students to all be able to read each other's blogs great if it's just you and your student then you're going to want to click on only blog author so uh, but you definitely don't want it to be public because you don't want other people outside of your classroom to be able to access that one thing you're going to want to do once you add yourself as a blog author, you're going to want to also make yourself an admin so that you can actually go in, you can type within their blog post, make changes. Um, if you're doing something where it requires you to actually write into their blog post, you're going to want to make yourself an admin. So once you've been added, you'll see a drop down menu next to your name where you can change yourself from author to admin. And um, because if you just keep it as an author, you'll just be able to view the post. You won't be able to do any kind of editing or changing. Once you've done that, you're going to press save and then you can go back to posts. So right now there's no post added. So if you want your students to begin writing a post, all they need to do is click on new post at the top. And this is what their dashboard will look like for each blog post that they write. They can give it a title. So let's just go test blog post number one and whatever you ha are having them journal about whether it's about a book that they're reading or just free write or whatever however you choose to use this in your classroom they could um, write in their information here so here I would write the content of my blog post and they would continue down so to keep it simple you're only going to want to, your students to do a few things here. There's a lot of things at the top here um, that they can just ignore. One is this compose and HTML. You want them to always be in the compose mode. That's what this looks like. If you click on HTML, um, as you start adding things, a lot of computer code is going to be here, and that's just going to confuse the students. So make sure that they always have the composed click. This is an undo button, so if they're typing something or they're adding something and they want to undo it, they can do it there. This is the font. They can change the font if they like. They can change the size. Of, oops. They can change the size of the text here. And then they can ignore this. And then this is just your simple bold, italic, and underlined. Cross out, strike through, which they're probably not going to use. The coloring of the text. Um, the coloring of the background of the text. And then any links. If they're going to add a link, they would have to highlight the text that they want to link up click on link and then paste the URL in there. Then this would be to add an image. Adding an image is pretty simple. If they click on the insert image here, if they have a picture that they've saved on a desktop or in a file somewhere that you've set up for them to save any pictures that you want them to be able to use, they can choose that file here, upload it and put it in here. They'll click on it and then it'll add it to the post. Another easy way for them to add an image, if they're using an image from a website or something um, that they're exploring on the web, they can simply copy and paste. So for example, if we're on my blog here and I want this image, if I copy image down here and then I'm over here, 
in my blog post, I can paste it and it'll paste there. Now notice it's large, it takes up too much space. So if you click on the image down here, you have the option to make it small, medium, large, extra large, or original size. Right now it's the original size, which is much larger than their blog posts will allow. So they can click on small, it makes it there, medium, large, extra large, extra large. So if they wanna see what this looks like once they've put it in, if they click on preview, it'll put it here for them and I haven't changed the background here yet, but this is what it would look like. And that's a pretty good size. It doesn't go off, it doesn't bleed off into the margins at all. So that would work. Um, so simply copy and pasting it, if they're taking it from another website and putting it onto their website, they would just right click, copy, and then right click on their own blog post and paste a video, which they probably won't do, and um, a special character, which obviously they're probably not gonna do. Ignore this little guy, it's just gonna insert a break within their text. And then this one is the text alignment, whether it's centered, um, left justified, right justified, or um, spread throughout. So those are probably the main things that they're gonna use, the, the size, the font, maybe the bold, italic, and underline. If you're having them link up or adding pictures, they'll use those icons, but most likely it's just gonna be simple text without doing too much to it. There's also the option to have a numbered list. If they click on that, it's gonna automatically number it for them, or if they click on that, it'll give it a bullet text. But you know, really keep it simple so that students don't get confused and their blog posts don't look too sloppy. So those that's basically what they're gonna to need to actually write their text. Um, over here, these options, probably not gonna worry about. This is if you wanted to label the, the blog post throughout the school year. If um, at some point you wanna go back and search for a certain blog post, you would search by label. So if you are having them write about something specific, you might give them a label that, that, that they are going to tag to this post that you can easily go back in and find it. Um, scheduling, you're probably not gonna do anything with scheduling your blog post. Don't play around with the permalink, that's just changing the link itself, um, location and options, those you won't need to worry about. Once a student has written their post, they simply are just gonna press publish and it will go live and you'll be able to view it. If they're not ready to publish, they can press save and then it will and, and close and it'll save it for them here. They can go back in and edit, preview or delete. So that's how they go about creating a blog post using Blogger.